this is another structural one, um, and this one and the next one, I'm gonna talk about pretty generally. Uh, and then, as I said earlier, we'll have a, a link uh, to get a little more specific information on. Um, and there's a couple reasons why I'm gonna talk about these generally, but um, load reductions and the codes. Um, the thing about load reductions, the term load reductions, is it actually has a huge number of meanings. Uh, there are many ways that that, I, that, that term will show up um, in code material and also uh, on the exam, uh, some of which are just sort of uh, anecdotal or just sort of ways of describing something. You're just talking about there's a load and you're reducing the load, and so it comes across sounding like a load reduction. Um, other ways are specific things you're allowed to uh, reduce the um, the load demand for uh, when you're doing a set of calculations. Uh, and that uh, will come for a number of different reasons. Um, before I talk about that for a second though, let me just say that there are a couple different ways that you can think about this. So load reductions can happen uh, because of the type of load it is. So for example, snow loads or wind loads are sometimes treated differently from other loads, seismic loads. Um, it can happen uh, you can get a reduction in the required load um, uh, because of the location of the member that you're um, trying to understand. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a second, but like the specifics of that particular spot on the structure may be such that uh, you are allowed to uh, not consider the full expected load um, because it's just not likely to happen. Um, and uh, then the other uh, sort of factor in all of this is uh, going to be the material of the structural system and the pattern that that structural uh, system is uh, being put together. So for example, you'll have different versions of load reductions for wood structures than you will for steel structures or for concrete structures. And a concrete slab, flat slab, would have a different set of load reduction um, factors uh, than say a one-way joist system in concrete. So the specifics um, of all of those factors will play into the, to the system of load reduction. Um, so a couple of different ways to think about this. Uh, like some people will say, well, wait, why can we reduce the load at all? Like isn't the load the load? Um, but if you actually start thinking about it, you realize, well, actually, no, the loads are really just sort of an idea. Right? Some of the loads are very clear and, and direct. That was, would mostly be the dead loads. And so the dead loads on a structure are the things that are part of the structure that are always going to be there. So if I have a steel beam and a steel joist system with a deck and a, some concrete on top of that, I can actually calculate out what all of that weighs and then that is my dead load and that means that the structure has to be able to, first of all, carry all the dead load. It has to be able to hold itself up. And then there's the live load, right? And the live load is all the other stuff. It's us, it's the, uh, the people who are walking around, it's the furniture that's movable, it's the uh, snow that arrives, it's the, uh, all of the different things that are changing all the time. Uh, so the dead load, relatively simple and straightforward and actually kind of calculable. Not always, there's some examples where that's, I mean, it's harder to do than it sounds, but it, you can kind of generally, uh, you can generalize into saying that the dead load is relatively easy to, to calculate. Um, but the live loads, actually there's a whole series of different uh, live loads um, that are, uh, you know, all over the place. Um, so where do we get live loads? Well, generally we get live loads from codes where they say, all right, uh, in a, an office setting, we're gonna say, that's a 100 uh, PSF, 100 pounds per square foot of live load uh, throughout this structure because of uh, the, the type of use that that structure is. So it's, a, it's this idea that is given to you that this is a code generated uh, element. Now, you don't always have to use the code. You can actually do, um, in most situations, you can do uh, calculations based on you know, reasonable estimations and then provide that to the uh, to the code officials and they'll accept it or not accept it. But typically you just take those numbers out of the code and they're, they're over the years, you know, reasonable, safe numbers that pretty much will ca in, encapsulate everything. Every once in a while you get a load that's a live load that's a little higher than, than what's uh, put into that number. But typically the loads are a little bit lower than that. 
Um, and so it's just a way for us to be able to make decisions. So it's, we need some, some weight, some load, in order to be able to do the calculations. So by doing all these uh, calculations, you suddenly realize, that, like, well, really, I'm going to have exactly 100 PSF over the entire surface of the floor area. And you know, when you really start getting into it, it becomes kind of clear that, well, that's actually kind of unlikely. And so there are ways to start thinking about, well, OK, there's a series of expectations, but then the particular elements, you can start to reduce the, the robustness of those uh, particular structural elements, like, say, a girder or something, uh, because you know that the likelihood of it being fully loaded all the time is just so unlikely. Um, so that's one reason why you're allowed to do certain kinds of load reductions in certain kinds of settings. Uh, another reason that you're uh, often allowed to do load reduction is the idea of, if, if you think about um, uh, sort of difference between a tributary area and uh, a sort of, the, it's referred to as the area of influence. Um, so for example, if I have a, a girder and a girder, uh, and I have a series of beams, and then there's flooring on top of those beams. Um, if I was looking at this particular, uh, this particular girder, and I was looking at the tributary area, well, I would go halfway, right? I'd have to draw a line halfway and halfway, and this area would be the area uh, that would be considered the tributary area for calculating the size of that. But in fact, uh, there's you know, another girder over here, and there's another one down there, and these beams are connected, and they're all stiffened because they're all working together. Uh, and so there's an influence area that is much larger. It's essentially twice the size because I'm including the influence of this girder and these beams all the way across. And so that's another example of certain kinds of settings that you are sort of allowed that, yes, the loading is done in this very particular way, but we also know that there's a whole series of these things over and over again, and they influence each other in their strength capacity uh, and can spread loads in, sort of, uh, in, in ways. Uh, so we can reduce the, um, uh, the size of the members because we know that they're all going to work together. So that's another sort of way of thinking about it. Um, Sometimes there's uh, elements that's different for, say, multiple story than it is for a single story structure. You'll see those kinds of issues. Um, so there's a whole bunch of these different issues that have to do, um, that'll, that the codes will actually write out and you can put into your calculations uh, that, all right, given this position in this setting with this kind of load and uh, with this structural material, uh, we, we've, each one of those gets a factor uh, and we can reduce the, the, um, the size of the member by essentially increasing the allowable um, load that we can put uh, on, on that member. Um, so this is, like I say, there's a lot of parts there, which is why I think uh, showing a link uh, will be more useful um, uh, down the road. But what you, the thing to take away is uh, these are um, the ability to say within a given uh, setup, it has to do either with the material and the layout, or it has to do with the type of loading, like say snow versus wind versus seismic, something like that. Um, uh, or it has to do with the, the, the material, um, uh, the location itself of the, of the individual member. Um, all of these different factors can play into the idea of a load reduction. And it's built into the codes so that you don't have to make things that are killer robust all the time because it's just sort of a waste of uh, energy and materials. There are a few places where no matter what, you're always doing the full on thing. And this is actually kind of an important point from, a, from an exam standpoint. Um, if you can totally imagine a question that says, so uh, what load reduction can I use uh, when I'm doing a, an assembly space? And the answer is none. Uh, if I'm doing an assembly space, or um, a high importance um, uh, area, which is usually referred to as uh, um, type A, I believe. Um, uh, so something like a hospital or a police station or something that really you, you absolutely want to withstand a, a hurricane or 
uh, you know, it's something like that. Um, those areas, you're not allowed to use any of the load reductions. Um, so there are places where they're allowed and there are places where they're not allowed. Uh, and um, certain things like uh, if you're doing a calculation with seismic loading and you also have to include the wind loading, the sort of expectation is, well, yes, one could have a seismic event at exactly the same time that a tornado is going through, but really it's kind of unlikely. Uh, and so you're allowed to kind of reduce one compared with the other uh, to make sure that the, the building is safe, but also um, uh, reducing the load that you're supplying uh, when you're combining these things together. Uh, another example would be uh, snow and seismic and some other ones like that, same kinds of ideas. So uh, there's a lot of different parts to it. Uh, the gist of it is there's sort of realities of building. The uh, code uh, live load numbers are built on a sort of general, simple idea that says this is one size fits all. And then in order to deal with that, they provide all these different ways for you to reduce those numbers in a way that's specific to logical ways of reduction so you're not making anything unsafe. All right, a little complicated. It's actually a very simple idea, but um, I, I all you really need to know is the simple part, but you should understand some of those different uh, breakdowns. Today's ARE Live episode is an extension of our online ARE curriculum that you can find on blackspectacles.com, the home of online learning for architecture and design. If you need to prepare for the ARE, which I assume many of you guys do, and if you're looking for a good way to study for the exam that's more flexible and easier to digest than the traditional exam prep materials, then head over to blackspectacles.com to try out any of our free ARE video tutorials that are taught by tonight's presenter, Mike Newman, and that are built in collaboration with AIA Chicago. As an attendee, and as you can see here on the screen here, we have a couple of notes or information for today's episode. Anyone who is attending today's session, you're eligible to use this coupon code worth 15% off the first charge on your individual membership. If you're one of those folks who would like for your firm to purchase Black Spectacles access for you and your colleagues, just visit blackspectacles.com business, which is this fourth link here, and we'll send all the information for your firm to get set up. And also from now until the 15th of next month, firm memberships are 15% off if you mention this episode when you submit your form through blackspectacles.com. Business. Also on this, you'll see that our next webinar will be on May 27th with Mike at six o'clock. So if you'd like to register for it, here's the registration link. We're still firming up the details and the actual topic. So if you have any suggestions and would like Mike to cover a specific topic or would like us to interview someone in particular about a specific topic, please let us know. 